ShireSociety.com. Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly message for August 27th. Governor, do you support uh, ending the Federal Reserve? No, I, I don't think that Governor Romney's taking a position to, to end the Federal Reserve. As we enter the fall political season, we will hear a great deal of rhetoric from both major political parties and their many candidates for office. It's important for us to remember, however, that words can be made meaningless by misuse or overuse. And when we as citizens allow politicians to obscure the truth by distorting words, we diminish ourselves and our nation. For example, we've all heard politicians use the words democracy and freedom countless times. They are used interchangeably in modern political discourse, yet their true meanings are very different. This is fraud! Convention is a farce! They have become what George Orwell termed meaningless words. Words like freedom, democracy, and justice, Orwell explained, have been abused for so long that their original meanings have been eviscerated. In Orwell's view, such words were often used in a consciously dishonest way. Will you be sending men with guns after me if I don't show up to your trial? One more word and I'll have you arrested. Without precise meaning behind words, politicians and elites can obscure reality and conditions people to reflexively associate certain words with positive or negative perceptions. In other words, unpleasant facts can be hidden behind purposely meaningless language. As just one example, Americans have been conditioned to accept the word democracy as a synonym for freedom. Thus, we are conditioned to believe that democracy is always and everywhere benevolent. What the hell, you guys? I'm opening my head on it. My property is my body. I'm not hurting anybody. What are you guys doing? Why don't you act like you the problem is that democracy is not freedom. Democracy is simply majoritarianism, which is inherently incompatible with freedom and ignores the minority. It makes rights relevant. While our Constitution certainly features certain democratic mechanisms, it also features inherently undemocratic mechanisms like the First Amendment and the Electoral College. America is a constitutional republic, not a democracy. Yet we've been bombarded with the meaningless word democracy for so long that few Americans understand the difference. If we intend to use the word freedom in an honest way, we should have the simple integrity to give it real meaning. Freedom is living without government coercion. So when a politician talks about freedom or liberty, regardless of the issue being discussed, ask yourself whether he is advocating more government force or less. The word liberal and conservative have also been abused. Liberalism, which once stood for civil, political, and economic liberties, has become a synonym for omnipotent, coercive government. Liberalism has been redefined to mean liberation from material wants, always via a large and benevolent government that exists to create equality on earth. Conservatism, meanwhile, once meant respect for tradition and distrust of active government. But in recent decades, conservatism has been redefined as support for big government grandiosity via military adventurism, corporatism, and inflationary monetary policy. The modern political right has redefined conservatism into support for an all-powerful central state provided that the state furthers supposedly benevolent goals. Orwell certainly was right about the use of meaningless words in politics. Our task, therefore, is to reclaim our language and reclaim our liberty. If we hope to remain free, we must cut through the fog and attach concrete meanings to the words politicians use to deceive us. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. He didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.